Okay guys, uh, another division question, question two, and in this one we can see, and this is going to be very common, that they're using a, a cell of the body, or it could be a plant cell, or it could be an animal cell, to talk about diffusion, because this is how diffusion happens in the real world. Remembering that oxygen and glucose diffuse into animal cells, carbon dioxide diffuses out after the process of respiration and carbon dioxide diffuses into chloroplasts in plant cells. Um, but remember, so does oxygen and glucose in their process of respiration as well. So once again, you can see the pattern. We've got a question asking us to name the organelles. We have here, hopefully you can see clearly, it's an animal cell. It says it's from a lung. Obviously, if you are confused, always read the question carefully just to check if there's a clue in there. If you think that's a bit of an odd shape, it says lung, it's obviously animal. Therefore, B is definitely the cell membrane, because animal cells don't have a cell wall. A is the nucleus, and C is the cytoplasm. So, uh, they've even given you the options there of uh, which ones to choose. Now, uh, B, very straightforward. Which feature of the cell allows oxygen to pass through it quickly? Now, we know that the nucleus controls what the cell does, the cell's activities. The mitochondria is where aerobic respiration takes place, which does involve oxygen, but doesn't involve diffusion. The thing that makes this cell uh, able to diffuse oxygen quickly is that it's thin. If I was to spray some perfume in the corner of a room, the closer I was to that perfume being smelled, uh, sorry, to, to released, the earlier I would smell it, and that is because the diffusion distance is smaller. So the smaller the diffusion distance, the quicker diffusion will happen. To complete the sentence by drawing a ring around the correct answer in the box, oxygen passes through the cell by diffusion, osmosis, respiration. It can't be osmosis because osmosis is a movement of water. It can't be respiration, because that's the breakdown of glucose with oxygen to form carbon dioxide and water and release energy, and so it is therefore diffusion. And we can know this because, in fact, diffusion, uh, in our notes, we know that glucose and oxygen both diffuse as examples of substances which diffuse. Now I'm going to move on to question three. Substances can move into and out of cells. How does oxygen move into and out of cells? Wow, isn't this amazing? We can just see the direct repetition which exists in these kind of questions. So we've just done that, diffusion. Diagram two, oh, sorry. Question two, diagram one shows the percentage concentration of oxygen in three cells, A, B, and C. Cell A, 5% oxygen. Cell C, 10% oxygen. Cell B, 20% oxygen. Oxygen can move from cell to cell. Into which cell, A, B, or C, will oxygen move the fastest? Now, in this scenario, whenever we have a gradient, the question would be if this was, say, a car moving down a hill, which would the car move fastest down? Would it move down this one with this slope here, or this one with this really steep slope? And of course, you know, it's this one with the very steep slope. And so in diffusion, we've just talked about it, a thin distance making diffusion happen more quickly. Diffusion will happen quickest when there's the steepest gradient, when there's the steepest hill. So if you look at this one uh, here, we have got 20%, 10% and 5%. So Diffusion is, and this is just a way of testing that you know what diffusion is, is the movement of particles from a high concentration to a low concentration. So the high concentration is this one, 20, and the steepest slope will be from 20 to 5, because that is the biggest difference. 20 to 5 is a bigger difference than 20 to 10. So into which cell A, B or C will oxygen move the fastest? Oxygen will move fastest into cell A because it's got the lowest 
concentration of oxygen. Okay. How does water move into and out of cells? This is a straightforward fact. It's not breathing. That is the process by which you take in oxygen and breathe out carbon dioxide. It's not respiration. That's the breakdown of glucose with oxygen to release carbon dioxide and water and energy. And it's called osmosis. If you didn't know that, then just make sure that you've used this wonderful tool of uh, these questions to get that knowledge into your head. So, just take this now, two, three. Differences in the concentration of sugars in cells cause water to move into or out of cells at different rates. Diagram 2 shows three different cells, P, Q and R. The information shows the percentage concentration of sugar solution, P, Q and R. 1% sugar, 2% sugar, 3% sugar. And this is going to be very similar to the question on diffusion that was talking about percentages of oxygen. Water can move from cell to cell. Into which cell, P, Q or R, will water move the fastest? Now in this case, once again, if we look at our gradients, we are going to have three different gradients here. This gradient is going to be the one that has the most water in, then the next most water, and then the least water. So a 1% sugar solution, and it's not water solution, it's sugar solution, is the most dilute. And then this one is the most concentrated. And in osmosis, water moves from an area of high water concentration to low water concentration. It's effectively diffusion for water. So the water will be moving into the most concentrated because it has the least water. So water will be moving into cell R the fastest. So guys, once again, there's question two and three, which show you the ways that they might ask questions about cells and diffusion and possibly osmosis.